What is up my dudes and dudettes? Darren D here back for another exciting scoot adventure. Today we are going to be doing a full-blown review on the High Boy Titan Pro. I've had it for about a month now. I've put several hundred miles on it and uh, I'm feeling pretty good that I'm capable of giving you the good, the bad, and the ugly about this scooter in a very unbiased and completely unsponsored way. See that bug? Well, I know you didn't see it, but I sure felt it. The bug that just clobbered me in the eye. This is why eye protection is absolutely 100% essential. I value my eyesight. I learned the hard way on my deployment in Iraq back in 2004 when they issued us ballistic eye protection and nobody wanted to wear it because it was hot, it was annoying, it got in the way of your weapon sights. And all that shit went right out the window the first time you saw an IED go off and take out somebody's eyeball. So wear your eye protection. What I tell you is the straight dope. I'm feeling pretty comfortable with its capabilities, what it can do, what it can't do. So while the High Boy Titan Pro does do okay on the road, it's definitely built for off-roading. Many of the design decisions that High Boy made were made with off-roading in mind. And when you look at other scooters in the same price range, like the Varla Eagle One or the Cabo Mantis, you'll see that a lot of those trade-offs were made with off-roading in mind. Low-end torque is a great example. The High Boy Titan Pro has great low-end torque. It'll get you out of that soft stuff. It will get you over that tree root or that rock, where the trade-off is it's slow from 25 to 30 miles an hour. Really fast off the line, really fast from zero to 25, starts to get slow between 25 and 30. If anything over 30, at least a rider like myself, I need a little downhill assist. So let's take a look at the construction. I really do like this scooter. I have a size eight foot and it takes up a good portion of the deck. The deck is wide and short, much like me, a wide and short rider, so I do appreciate it. The stem is sturdy, but short. A lot of taller riders complain that it's too short for them, that their arms are fully extended. This works well for me at five foot five. Might not work well for you if you were six foot two. iBoy also has what I consider to be one of the better mechanisms for folding the scooter right here. This metal wheel, you just unscrew this bad boy and the scooter folds right down. It's light enough that it's easy to pick up and put in the trunk of basically any car. It will fit in any car bigger than a smart car. Um, if you are stopping to run into 7-Eleven to grab beef jerky and a monster, you're definitely going to want to use this lock because even though you do have key ignition, which is a great benefit, definitely theft deterrent, the scooter is light enough that somebody could grab it and run with it. I don't think they'll get very far. I mean, it probably weighs about 60, 65 pounds. Now, yes, the stem is short. Tall riders might not love that, but even tall riders will agree that having the short stem is a real benefit when off-roading, especially when jumping. It will help keep those bars from hitting you in the chin. High Boy's headlights do a really good job of making you visible to cars and illuminating the road on the sides of you. However, they don't illuminate the road in front of you at all. So if you're going to be riding at night, you're definitely going to want one of these aftermarket headlight. I have a link to this one below in the description. The taillights on the High Boy Titan Pro are very good for visibility. They're always on and they flash when you hit the brakes. Cables are neat, well wrapped and out of the way. High Boys definitely made an attempt at waterproofing the scooter. Is it waterproof? No. Is it weatherproof? Eh, sort of, not really. If you got caught in a rainstorm, I would say get undercover as quickly as you can. It'll be okay if it gets a little bit wet, but getting drenched, no, not good for your electronics. The handlebars have these millimeter measurements on them, so you can easily move them up or down to suit your preferences. I like them nearly straight. Some riders complain that the grips twist and slip off. I have not had that problem. It's an easy problem to fix with hairspray if you happen to have it on your High Boy Titan Pro. The one criticism I do have of the grip is even after over a month now, my hands smell like new vinyl every time I ride. Investing in a good pair of motorcycle gloves is a really good investment, both because of the smell and to protect yourself when you fall. The battery gauge is very basic, just four LEDs, three green, one red, each representing 25% of the battery. Never trust the battery gauge that's on the controller over here. The cable actuated brakes are adequate 
if not ideal. They have this nice comfy coating on them, which feels good on the fingers for sure, but they also have this wobble in them and I don't see any way to tighten that up or fix it. These are not screws, they're pins. If anybody has a fix for that, let me know below in the description. On a scooter that's primarily built for off-roading that has a relatively tame top speed of about 32 miles an hour, I see the argument for cable actuated brakes over hydraulic. Catch a hydraulic line on a tree root and not only are you going to cause an environmental catastrophe, but it's really going to ruin your day very quickly. If you were to catch a wire that can be fixed in the field, unless you're packing hydraulic lines and brake fluid, you can't fix hydraulic brakes in the field. We covered brakes, now let's talk about the throttle. I'm a big fan of the thumb actuated throttle. I think this is a superior design to a twist throttle or a trigger throttle like you see on the Mantis or on the Varla. Reason being, if you hit a bump or a pothole, you are much less likely to grip onto the handlebars tightly and accidentally deposit yourself up there in lunar orbit by mashing the accelerator all the way down. The highest end, fastest scooters in the world, like Ryons, for example, use thumb throttles. I think this is a good idea. This control panel, on the other hand, is a total miss and an absolute piece of garbage. Hi boy, clearly stole this off of their e-bike or somebody else's e-bike this is not purpose built for a scooter you can see it says right there pass pedal assist this is an e-bike controller on the main screen we can switch between a trip odometer an overall odometer the current volts and nobody seems to know what the heck this is if you know what it is leave it below in the description we can enter p settings by clicking the up and down arrows together and scroll through them this is the other thing that's a huge miss on the High Boy Titan Pro. Most of these do nothing. The ones that do do something don't do what they say they're going to do. And the manual is absolutely no help. It is terribly written, terribly translated, and just doesn't shed any light on what a lot of these P settings are. The one thing I will say, this one here, this is your tire size. It says in the manual, don't change it from 10 inches, except the controller's not measuring the tire size in inches. It's measuring them in centimeters. So if you want your speedometer and your odometer to work, you need to change that to 25.5, or I found it to be more accurate at 26. To engage cruise control is a setting you can turn on in the P settings. Long press on the down arrow to turn it on on the controller. Be very careful with this. Unlike basically every other device that has cruise control on it, it is not automatically disengaged by touching the brakes. You must hit the throttle again to disengage cruise control on the scooter. That is a huge miss for me and has almost caused me to crash on more than one occasion. Like I said, the manual is very little help when it comes to the different P settings. The ones that I can't figure out are the ones about magnets and things. I have no idea how many magnets are in the motor. You have three speed settings on this scooter. Economy mode, commuting mode, and sport mode. So you should only have one, two, and three speeds. But in actuality, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I don't think there's really much difference between one, two, and three. Six is about the top of what you're gonna get out of commuting mode, and nine being, of course, the top you're gonna get out of sport mode. I typically will travel around in six or seven dual motors just to cruise. That'll get me 24, 25 miles an hour. When I want to get up to 30, I'll kick it up to 9. You can switch back and forth between single and dual motor over here. With the orange button turning the headlights on and off, it has nothing to do with eco or sport mode. My overall thoughts and recommendations on this scooter are hard to nail down exactly. Would I buy it again, or would I recommend it to a friend? I enjoy riding it. The relatively tame top speed of 32 miles an hour will still scare the hell out of you. I upgraded to the High Boy from a Segway ES3. Top speed 15 miles an hour, 18 to 20 after I hacked the firmware. So the High Boy Titan Pro rips compared to that. Where the High Boy excels for me is in going up hills. The dual 1200 watt motors, can climb 35 degrees. I don't know if they really can, but they certainly eat for breakfast hills that would have had me walking the Segway. The acceleration is fun. I give a lot of cars heart attacks at red lights when they see how fast I can accelerate. But on the open road, I can't go fast enough to really keep up. Off-road, this baby is a lot of fun. So if you have access to a lot of trails and plan to ride off-road, it might just be the scooter for you at the $1,500 price point. If you're gonna be riding more on roads, maybe you should think about the Cabo Mantis or the Varla Eagle One. Any choice is a good choice, 
they all have their positives and negatives, but if pure speed is really what you're after, maybe save your money for a 011X or a Dualtron Thunder. A more experienced rider could probably handle that no problem. I'm not even going to attempt it. <laughs> I'm 43 years old, people. That's how guys my age end up in the emergency room. Know your limits. You can definitely push your limits, but don't push them every day. All right, let's get out of here. Ugh. All right, so zero consideration whatsoever for battery management, and we went 16 miles running full speed the whole way. So I'd say we're probably getting close to that 40 miles if you're real careful with the battery. Make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Peace.